Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. Kapow! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's a so you've sent me a series of four images in the same kind of vein. So this is uh, a, 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 an image which is crafted to to kind of teach something. And in this case, the the word of the image is promotion. And inside that image is basically an SLR camera on a, on a tripod that's you know with the whole kind of kit like with a with a little shotgun mic on top of the on top of the camera even a diffuser light in, in the image with the handles yeah so promotion let's yeah. talk promotion shall we sure yeah i think that a lot of the people i work with when i first come across them and the folks i talk to a lot of their barriers when it comes to sharing those parts of their stories mm -hmm. is because I don't want to sell to people. They uh, have right. that that image in their heads of like the used car salesman. Speaking or like of self-limiting beliefs. Right, right, right. Or or the door-to-door -door sales guy yeah. that everybody always slams the door on, you know. And and they're like, I don't want to be selling myself. I hate doing that. And and what I tell them all the time, I was actually just helping out a, a friend of mine on um, revamping his newsletter and getting more into sponsorships yeah. um, for his radio show. And I was saying to him, I'm like, Here, here's the thing. Um, it's not about selling yourself. It's about building those relationships. Sure. Right? I mean, in, in the case of something, in his case, like sponsorship, it is maybe perhaps a little bit more transactional because they're giving you some money and in return, you're giving them, you know, X amount of promotion on all these different platforms. But it's still a good relationship that you're building. Mm -hmm. You're still bringing them business and they're still helping out what it is that you're building. And I think what it really comes down to is people get so bogged down in not wanting to be judged as being pushy right. or fake or um, just disingenuous. And I, and I tell them all the time, I'm, I'm online all the time saying this saying, you know, it's about particularly in the world of public relations. If you try to lie, if you try to spin anything, they will find you out in a heartbeat. Oh, for sure. And in today's day and age. So really what it's about is being authentic, being mm -hmm. transparent, being honest about what it is that um, you're doing, why you're doing it. And in a lot of cases for some of the smaller entrepreneurs out there, really getting into the behind the scenes nitty gritty of like, hey, I know you haven't heard from me in a while this is what I've been dealing with. And I wanted to be transparent about it because I didn't want to hide anything from you. Yeah. And I think um, learning how to promote in that way that's more authentic, whether you're using uh, public relations, whether you're using social media, email, website, whatever it is that you're using, that's really what people gravitate towards because they don't mm -hmm. want to be sold to they don't want to be yelled at mm -hmm. um and and that's kind of how i see advertising as promotion <laughs> um you know because it's one of those things it's like you drive past a billboard who's going to remember it yeah right no but i, I but I, I also love the the kind of because i think like a writer so in in um as I'm listening to you, when you when you say the word advertising, it's like there was a font change and there was like an <laughs> italics. I was just like an advertising, and it's like yeah. <laughs> I I find I find so one of the things that okay because my first degree was in creative writing and arts, very soft, and then I went to human rights. Also, I would say kind of like no, it's still it's still controversial. And then I went into um, medical publishing, and then I ended up meeting one of the co-founders of one of the largest companies in the world, right? So DHL and a couple of things with Poe. Okay, his name is Poe Chung. So with Poe, I essentially was the apprentice to his mastery of what service leadership is about. He would say that the person, and he's not the first person to say this, but still, it's the idea that the person with the best story wins. The people are attracted to others through our stories. And so 
the, the idea of promotion is just making sure that your story it becomes alive because it only lives when somebody else receives it or hears mm -hmm. it or reads it. I mean, I totally agree with what you're saying because it's just like anything else related to storytelling is if you're not talking to people about it and you're not sharing it, who's going to know? Yep. And if people, people don't know what they don't know, right? Yeah, At exactly. the end of the day. And if they don't know it, then it makes no sense to be sitting there and going, why am I not getting the results that I want to get when you're not, you're not sharing it? Mm -hmm. No one's talking about it because you're not sharing it. And I think a lot of this kind of comes down to being willing to push out of, you know, your, your, your comfort zone. Um, because as, as the saying goes, courage is not the absence of fear. It's moving forward even with it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I choose to do that on a daily basis because living with regrets is a much harsher way to live. I would rather have tried something, put it out there, then, you know, looked at the aftermath and go, okay, maybe that didn't work the way I wanted to, but that's fine. I don't consider it failure if I have something to learn from it. And I feel like there's always something to learn from that. Yes, well said. Let me shift over onto one track. One is this idea that if we pull focus and pull back, for somebody who doesn't like the, the vocabulary of business and clients, which is kind of why I was trying to enlarge it before by saying, okay, it's about life. It's bigger, than, it's bigger than just clients and business. It really is that. So if we keep pulling back, it's this notion that this is about survival, right? So being in Vancouver, for example, where there's tons of acting and lots of theater. Well, less, I know less about theater, but more about the, the movie business. Mm -hmm. It is so competitive. And in a way, why is it competitive? Is because different people are in competition with each other ultimately to survive. Like they're really trying to promote themselves and get out there because at the end of the day, they have to put food on the table. Like they have to earn a living. Mm -hmm. And so I think on the one hand, hopefully somebody who's listening to this and saying, well, this is really businessy and that's not really my, my bag. Then I, I'll just say, look, just switch the words around because this is really about survival. So when was there a time where you really created a breakthrough for somebody, uh, like a huge one around their mindset around promotion? Because for a lot of people, promotion is like, eh, it's kind of gross. I don't want to be a sale. I don't want to be like a, a sleazy car salesman. But yeah, so, so describe a time when you really created this breakthrough where, where so you described before with the, with the uh, graphic novel, yeah. but where was it where the, the, the change in mindset was like really stark? Yeah, I had a coaching client. She was somebody who had kind of a super skilled in a bunch of different areas, had been into the podcasting thing for a long time. Mm, I hate um, podcasters. And, and, <laughs> and, and she had launched like, I think three of them. And she was starting to think to herself, she's like, I, I'm starting to notice that there's folks that actually want to learn mm -hmm. how to do this kind of thing. And, and I've worked with some people on that side of it. But where her mindset block was, was I don't know if I can teach. Uh. I don't know if I have enough knowledge, enough expertise, and not, you know, in order to, for people to take me seriously. So I flipped the script on her during one of our calls and I said, okay, well, let's dig into this a little bit. What is enough? Mm. Who decides what is enough in terms of how proficient you are at something? Because for someone like me, looking at it from the outside, I said, you've ar you're already launching, like you're working three of these yeah you clearly know what you're doing there's been a lot of mistakes that you've made in the past that you've learned from that other people could learn from so what could it hurt to start out with sharing some of that yeah sharing some of your journey talking about what you've learned and and allowing people to kind of get to know you beyond just being behind the mic right right sort of thing um, because I said to her, I'm like, it's an arbitrary word enough uh -huh. to, to really look at 
where your knowledge is, your expertise is, and where your experiences have led you. Everybody has that. The key is to looking at changing how you choose to value those things. And 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 when I said that to her, I I swear I saw the light bulb go off. Awesome. And she went wow like she's like i never thought about it that way because i always thought like you know there's people that have more degrees than i do there's people that have launched bigger podcast networks than me and i'm like and yeah that's their journey that doesn't invalidate your journey at all or your experiences or your knowledge the key is to take a step back and look at it as what have you learned that you think someone else could benefit from because you don't want them to make the same mistakes. Yes, uh, I agree. No, I love it. I love it. Lillian, this is great. Um, What's also interesting to me is how different people find themselves, you know, so for example, my energy is kind of spazzy and playful and whatever that word, you know, all those things, flighty. But then as you speak, and how you're speak, like how you're presenting, and you know how I see you and experiencing how I'm experiencing your your communication. You have a very decisive, clear way of of putting forth your ideas that is quite compelling and quite convincing. Um, so that's a compliment. There are no insults on shooting it raw. It's a compliment. <laughs> I so no, really, that. no, it's it's great because I get to see how another person landed in the world of of this thing that we do and how it manifests. And so, I'm going to end this. So in a way, I'm going to let you end this in a way so that you can really frame why would somebody? It's because for a lot of people buying for this kind of service, there's always a bit of a barrier. It's like, well, I don't know, do I really want to pay nine hundred dollars for that thing? So. How do we flip their mind to realize, oh, wait a second, like, how do you value a mindset? Like, how do we get them to realize the value of, of, because I see it, like, I totally see it in talking to you. How do we get people to realize the magic that you bring to them? It comes down to, like, the question I always ask is, are you someone who wants to change okay do you want that change and do you want that personalized guidance and that education that is going to help you gain the confidence to get to where you want to go because my motto for my business i follow this proverb pretty closely is you lead a man to a fish he will eat for a day you teach him how to fish he will eat for a lifetime And that is true of anything in that, you know, once you have that, once you have those healthy coping mechanisms, once you have those tools, nobody can take that away from you. That is your power. That is your knowledge. And that is what's going to help you gain the confidence to tackle these kinds of things where originally it would paralyze you. Yeah. It would take you months, weeks, if not years to actually move forward and do something. But now... You can take a step back, think about it for a couple of days and go, you know what? This is the right step for me to take. I love it. So Lillian Sue, one time before uh, we, we wrap this up, what is the website that people should go to to check you out? It's going to be in the show notes. Yep. But just say it so it burns in their heads. Uh, they can find my website at in retrospect writing services. That's all one word dot com. Sweet. Lillian, thank you. This is great. So fun. Yeah. Like this, this, I really enjoyed this, Rand. I've, <laughs> I've done, you know, no word of a lie. I've done quite a few interviews over the last couple of years, but this one ranks up there as one of the most unique. Aw. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you so much, Lillian. Awesome. So, is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. 
Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw.